Sometimes they may, you may be asked to do some blood works, mm. uh, some labs uh, before you do your endoscopy if you are a patient that is prone to bleeding sometimes mm. uh, and they are going to probably do some interventions on you. So as I mentioned earlier, we can do some procedures that look more like surgeries yeah. during endoscopy or remove tumors and, and cancer cells and so on and so forth and that could be a bit extensive sometimes mm -hmm. and even though bleeding is minimal there are people who already have problems with their, their system That's and so yeah and so they may ask you to do some labs for us to know uh, the risk involved and then what we can do to support you uh, during the procedure yeah. and then we have the lower GI endoscopy um, some of them that require some preparation minimally and some extensive. I mentioned the anoscopy, the proctoscopy, and the sigmoidoscopy. These three ones, the, normally you probably would need anything between enema or just um, nothing at all to have uh, and to prepare for it. Um, enema is, you know, is already prepared solution yeah. that is in the pharmacy uh, and then the pharmacist will teach you how to apply it but you know back in Ghana we've been doing exactly yeah uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be soapy water mm -hmm. warm uh, water yeah just, just some warm water yeah, if mm -hmm. you have saline you can yeah. use a little bit warm and you could just use that the, the whole idea is just to irritate your um, uh, bowel so that you can try to page yourself mm. and so for anoscopy you really don't need that for proctoscopy too you really don't need that sometimes um, sometimes you may need it but mm. for sigmoidoscopy you definitely need to have a, an enema uh, done and then you can go for your sigmoidoscopy. When it comes to colonoscopy, that's the big deal. Yeah. And so for colonoscopy, you, your endoscopy nurse would actually uh, give you a bowel prep, what we call a bowel prep. Mm -hmm. And the bowel prep is um, a formula or, or a solution, something that you will mix into a solution a very high volume solution, usually anything between two liters to four liters of mm -hmm. uh, liquid that you'll be given instructions on how to take them. Um, and also you, you probably would have to stop eating for about a whole day mm -hmm. uh, uh, before, uh, I mean, while you do this preparation as, as well. Yeah. Uh, some people Every hospital has its policy yeah. how they do it, mm -hmm. but generally um, it can take between anything between five, okay, so seven, five, three days to prepare for a colonoscopy. But mm -hmm. averagely, anything like three days, you should be able to prepare for a colonoscopy. Wow. So for for the the third day before your appointment time, they will, they, will, they will modify your diet for you a little. They'll tell you, you can eat this, you shouldn't eat that, you can eat this, you shouldn't eat that. And basically the foods that they would ask you not to eat are foods that are bulk forming, mm -hmm. bulk stool forming uh, foods. So mm -hmm. foods that have a lot of roughage, they mm -hmm. would ask you not to eat them. And so um, all those category of foods, they would ask you not to eat them. Mm -hmm. And then they will give you a special list of uh, meals that you can mm -hmm. eat, yeah. okay. foods that don't produce, don't make you produce a lot of stool, so, but yeah. can can still nourish you and all that. Mm -hmm. They will ask you not to eat those things. And then on the second day, second day to the procedure, to they would encourage you now to start going more on liquid diets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. You, you graduate or whatever yeah. from, yeah. you know, 
those food now to liquid diets. And when we say liquid diets, you know, there are foods that you that are just liquid. Yeah, soups and all that. Exactly. So mm -hmm. they just want to gradually, gradually wean you off. off yeah. yeah um, so that your system gets to adjust to mm -hmm. it. And then a day to the procedure itself, you stop eating all together, okay. no food at all. And then you start taking the prep that you are given. And this is a lot of fluid. Mm -hmm. And that is not the only fluid that you're supposed to be taking because you're going to have to now take your own water and so on alongside mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some other drinks. If you feel like taking some drink and mm -hmm. the drinks are usually clear fluids, as I mentioned, clear mm -hmm. fluids. Yeah. And so it is. It, become, it becomes quite difficult uh, taking the bowel prep because one, they don't really taste nice. Um, even though they have flavor, yeah. you know, they are flavored. Uh, well, they don't, nice. yeah, really taste. So people really find it difficult to take all of it, but mm -hmm. it is very, very important that you take all of it uh, because that helps to basically clear yeah. up yeah. your whole system. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, if you're able to finish it, you feel very light, you know, within yourself. You see that, oh, um, you know, a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. that's feeling is there, but taking it is a problem. Yeah. Um, and so yes, uh, it's very very important to to consume all of that and alongside taking a normal fluids and then rehydrate yourself because the moment you start drinking this bowel prep, what happens to you is that you start visiting the toilet and you can visit the toilet many many times. Many, many times. You go to the <laughs> toilet. And you, yes. you, you're actually purging yourself. You so you're actually washing your whole system. I can detox. <laughs> exactly. And to the point that there's nothing more to wash. And when you go to the toilet now, all you see is clear fluid I coming out, clear yeah. fluid coming out, sometimes yellowish mm -hmm. coming out. And, and that tells you that you're now ready for the procedure. Yeah. I, I am not specific on the kind of bowel prep to take because every hospital has different yeah, types and of course yeah, for marketing, marketing purposes um, we cannot mention but what you should know is that this is a medicine which is prescribed to you mm -hmm. and you should be able to finish it it becomes in large volume Gallon, uh, yeah. yeah about two liters to four liters uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of fluid um, <clears throat> after that you can still, as I said, continue to take your normal water, juice, clear fluids mm -hmm. for up to about two hours before you have your colonoscopy done. Um, previously, um, or there are still places that would tell patients not to eat anything at all. Don't even drink water. Don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> It is not uh, true. Yeah. It is not true. What you actually end up doing to this patient is that they become very weak. Mm. And after the colonoscopy, they continue to be weak. Yeah. And their recovery becomes a big problem. They yes. have yeah. very terrible experience um, mm -hmm. uh, after their procedure, I mean, during and after the procedure. So mm -hmm. I would uh, send this information to all nurses working in endoscopy that uh, the bowel preparation for colonoscopy is essential encourage them to take it let them understand that it's not a pleasant solution but it needs to be taken in full and they can continue to drink water or their favorite juices mm -hmm. so far as it is clear, clear yeah. uh, alongside in between mm -hmm. uh, because some of the fluids you take is like every 15 minutes you take a quantity of 250 mils or 240 mils of it. Mm -hmm. And in between that, you go to the washroom, come back, drink your water, drink your juice, just continue doing, mixing all those things up mm -hmm. and, and encourage them to take it. And don't don't tell your patients not to First drink four anything. hours, yeah. 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 yeah, they can still drink water. They can still take their juices up to about two hours before the appointment time. Uh, mm -hmm. so that is that is basically that's wow. how you want to prepare for 
a, a colonoscopy. Of course, as I said, if there is going to be a need for you to have uh, some interventions, some polyps removed, some uh, tumors removed, and so on, we may mm -hmm. go a bit further to ask you to do some lab tests. Yes, okay. yes and um, just have to help us know. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And uh, um, also, um, you should tell your doctor or your nurse if you've had some surgeries before. What kind of surgeries you've had before, and if you if you have some metals in or implants in your body, okay. and yeah, some of those things have to be made known mm -hmm. uh, because some of the equipment that we use um, they would interfere with that and could harm you if you mm -hmm. don't let us know. And but if we are aware, then we can know what protective measures to put in place uh, for your safety. Uh, for the women to, they need to let us know if they are pregnant or not, and so on. So, so that you know, their safety and the baby safety will be considered uh, as well. Yeah. Wow, this is a very long one. I might have to do split it into parts one and two, and we'll definitely have to bring Joel back. So, if a nurse is watching and she has interest in endoscopy nursing in Ghana. Yeah. Is there a training center? Do you organize monthly quarterly training? How would the person pursue such a career? Or they have to go in school outside Ghana? Okay, so um, my journey has, mm -hmm. Very has unique. always been mm -hmm. um, has been you know like started from on the job. Yeah, training. observing. Yeah. Yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, we don't have enough training centers yeah. even world worldwide for nurses that want to do endoscopy uh, the trainings come in once a while and they mm -hmm. are specially arranged trainings uh, we have places now who are going full-time training and, and endoscopy okay. and i think very few universities are also offering anything like that uh, gastroenterology uh, there is a plan to begin um, a very formal training in Ghana uh, in the near future, uh, which will be conducted either at the university level or at the college level. Uh, is in the pipeline. Nice. Uh, discussions are on. Uh, however, in the meantime, what I am doing is mm -hmm. to regularly organize training for nurses, interested nurses, and nurses who are already working in endoscopy. And I mentioned that I have the society that's called the Society for Nurses in Endoscopy and Minimally Invasive Surgeries. This, this society, I've, I formed it in 2015. Um, there is another branch in Nigeria. Uh, I have a very uh, a colleague who uh, has peer-headed that one um, in Nigeria. So we have Society for Nurses in Endoscopy Ghana, Society for Nurses in Endoscopy in Nigeria. The plan is to spread across Africa, have it in every country, and then gradually we have massive training, skills mm -hmm. development, and improve safety and endoscopy for our people because our people also deserve the best. Mm -hmm. So as a nurse, if you're interested, first thing you want to do is to find yourself working in endoscopy. Mm -hmm. Find yourself working in endoscopy unit somewhere mm -hmm. in the hospital. Uh, I, I must say, and I acknowledge the fact that it's not every endoscopy unit in Ghana that's doing the best, that's doing the right thing. There's a lot mm -hmm. of rubbish uh, going on around the place. Yeah. Um, but you want to find yourself in a, in a well-established hospital mm -hmm. um, where practice is um, up to standard. The standard, yeah. And then you begin to build your skills and experiences from there. And then each time you hear of a uh, training session in endoscopy, workshops, conferences, mm -hmm. something in endoscopy, have the interest to attend. Yeah. Yeah. And then definitely, if you still are interested and you really want to do what's like what I'm doing now, then you want to uh, find yourself attending endoscopy training facilities, uh, which obviously has to be outside, either in the UK, in the US, or uh, somewhere else. Um, in the UK here, we have 
places that you can have the training in endoscopy um, and, and be certified um, as an uh, endoscopy nurse. Now, I must also say that we have what we call the nest, uh, sorry, the, we have the, an endoscopy nurse, and then we have the nurse endoscopist. These are two different people, these are two different uh, people with different roles, right? Mm. So the, the endoscopy nurse is usually somebody that's been trained with the skills to mm -hmm. manage and run, help run the endoscopy units, the endoscopy mm -hmm. facility. So mm -hmm. they, they ensure patient safety mm -hmm. and endoscopy equipment safety. They actually set up the whole place, no, organize the liaise mm -hmm. between the patient and the, the doctor, the consultant, mm -hmm. uh, preparing the patient for the procedure, making sure that the right patient has come, mm -hmm. everything is set, the equipment are working, and um, everything is available to have the procedure done. And they have a manager who is like the, the one in charge of the whole mm -hmm. endoscopy uh, department or unit uh, and making sure things are you know, in place for mm -hmm. continuous service and safe yeah. and quality endoscopy services. That's the nurse, that's the endoscopy nurse. Yeah. Okay. Then, we, then we have the nurse endoscopist, endoscopist yeah. who is trained further from the endoscopy nurse, trained further to work just like what a doctor does. Mm -hmm. So what a consultant does. So, but they have a limitation. They are not able to do um, all the procedures, yes. and they, so. But but they basically perform the procedures. Some of the procedures themselves. Mm. Um, uh, they they work hand in hand with the consultants, uh, and um, it's a very interesting area to also consider. It's. Yeah, I know it take us a while to do that in mm -hmm. in Ghana, but in, we'll get there. in the UK, <laughs> yeah, in the UK, in the US, yeah, we have a lot of um, nurse endoscopists and, and they are practicing very well. Um, there is that plan to have this program also started in Ghana uh, very soon. And so uh, I'm working on that. We'll see, we'll get there. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much for coming to share this. I know we still have a lot to cover. I know I'm definitely going to bring you back. Any last words, anything you want to say, anything where I didn't go to where you are and all that stuff, but if you, anything you want to sh share, I would love to hear them. Well, I just want to say that um, <laughs> there is, you know, if you really haven't been exposed to standards and you keep yourself within your comfort zone, you think that you're the best uh, <laughs> until you get out of the comfort zone. <laughs> uh, you get, and, and you look back and you realize that, oh my hmm. God. What well, have that, I been all these years? Yeah. And no hope. Is that, is that what we've been doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I am for safe and quality endoscopy. It's something that I, I, um, I, I've been spearheading for some time now because mm -hmm. I know that our people deserve the best. Definitely. So knowledge sharing, skill sharing is what I've been doing. Unfortunately, I, I am not able to do this alone. So I got my nurses, I tried to impart the knowledge into them, open their eyes to see the good things. That's the, the word. Best, <laughs> best, yeah, best practices. And I'm glad some some of them are taking it and are changing things in the country, Ghana. But there is still more room for improvement because what we need is support from our colleagues in endoscopy. Endoscopy is a teamwork. We work with the doctors. Uh, unfortunately, Ghana runs a system where the doctor is, seems to be the superior of the it's, 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 it's no teamwork, it's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we don't have a word colloquia. for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to find a best colloquia. <laughs> I mean, this is a team with yeah, the nurses, it's yeah, as important, yes, yes. <laughs> nurse is as important as a doctor, yeah. And and we are we all work as a team, you know. Mm -hmm. So each time I, I encounter such problem, I, I always have problems with the doctors, yeah. But but uh, we have to go on. 
I encourage nurses to learn, mm -hmm. uh, be exposed, mm -hmm. read. We don't like reading. We should read. We should always be eager to develop our skills. Yeah. And, endoscopy. and then try to learn more best practices and do, and, and do that. Uh, the types of endoscopy units that spring up in, in, the, in Ghana, most of them are just in for profit. They are just in to make money it's, mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's very expensive. It is. Uh, and there is a lucrative area for a lot of people. So, and that mm -hmm. is all they focus on. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't think about patient safety. Safety, they don't yeah. Think about all of that. And I would blame the nurses that uh, work in those facilities for that as well because they should be the ones insisting that well this practice is not good I'm not going to involve myself in I've had a lot of people invite me to come and set up for them that's could be I go mm -hmm. there and I see that the place is in a mess I make recommendations if you take it I go on with you if you don't take my recommendations I leave you mm -hmm. because I don't want to be associated with um uh, play that is not your, yeah, yeah your not practices safe. very very yeah. unsafe practices and yeah. i can if you permit me mention some places that i've, I've successfully set up set yeah. up endoscopy and mm -hmm. i can say they are doing very well first of all um the military hospital where i was they, mm -hmm. they are good um yeah well we both were <laughs> yeah so we both were um mm -hmm. recently before i left Ghana, also with the uh, University of Ghana Medical Center. And I can tell you on our authority that that is the best place to have endoscopy. Sure. In, in, I, saw in the, the, I saw the images. <laughs> very yeah. impressive. Yeah. Uh, I, I dedicated my time and everything to set up that place. And I had a, a massive support from the CEO and the medical director. And, and, and wow. they, they, they have done so well. Look, there's everything you need safe yeah. endoscopy you go to EGMC <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, you, you never regret and there are some other private places that are also mm -hmm. in um, GDEC wow. uh, also very very good the consultant is very very uh, good guy he is from the UK he will come and do it Lista also there Lista yes. Lista Lista very fantastic place uh, I said that place to up and it's really, really good. And then yes. there is also the Eurocare also there. Mm -hmm. But 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 all I'm trying to say is that there's still room for improvement. Yeah. And this can only happen if our people begin or continue to learn mm -hmm. and avail themselves for training. I would always organize trainings and I would invite people to come. When you mm -hmm. come, you never regret yeah. attending my training. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time. I would uh, definitely bring you back. We'll go deeper and uh, say, uh, touch on a lot of topics we couldn't touch on today. It's been a pleasure having you here. And yeah. I'll see you next time. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.